Welcome everyone for Friday's second uh, session. And we have here Mikko Lehtonen, who is a game developer and also demo coder. And he's going to tell you how to get started uh, with ePhone. Please welcome Mikko. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, when I uh, started doing this slideshow, I w wasn't sure what I was going to talk about. Then I thought, what, what was it that I wanted to know when I started? That wasn't available in maybe in Apple documentation and stuff. So this is first a small overview what the platform is about, and then some specific issues that, that I had and that others might have. And seem to have had. So, how to get started? Get there, SDK, you need, um, I, I'm, I have to mention that I am only talking about the um, official SDK, and I don't know anything about the gel protein stuff or anything, so uh, get a Mac, uh, re register for the account, download the SDK, read some docs, code, and you get profit, yeah. That's, that's how easy it is. Uh, to test on the device, uh, you need to pay for the, mm, uh, to get a signing key, and there's an elaborate signing process. It's, um, uh, the signing process to me seems a bit um, paranoid maybe, but it's quite a complicated thing. You create a de uh, developer key and send a signing request key to Apple, and you get the signed key back. And you say, "I have this application, I have ID, and I have these devices." And you request for provision for those, and you yeah, they can generate a provision for you, and you add to the device and the project. And yeah, I just wanted to mention <laughs> it's a, it seems complicated, but they have quite, quite simple step by step directions for it, so don't be afraid of it, but yeah, it sucks. So overview of the platform. The hardware is, um, well, quite nice little device. Uh, it decent, re decent resolution for the screen, not, not great, but decent, and ARM CPU. Quite a bit memory, even though, though you don't get to use all of it, actually quite a small bit of it. Uh, it has a actual GPU, <laughs> uh, actual meter for, for the um, actual iterations. <laughs> well, so you know the um, orientation for the device also. And also touches. And you can use floats, which is not nice. Uh, if you've done work on uh, mobile devices before, where you usually don't have uh, hardware floats, and it sucks, but you actually should use floats on iPhone. And uh, recently there's the 3GS version, which is more powerful and has actually uh, shaders, and it's nice, but I don't know much about them yet. It's new area, so in mobile space, so, so I don't know much about them, so I don't talk about them that much. But uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, the uh, operating system is basically the desktop OS X, a little bit stupid, and uh, so it's, uh, it's a Darwin kernel. Which, uh, which is BSD der derivative, and it's, uh, it's quite nice to have an actual real operating system on a mobile device, which is <laughs> not what you usually are used to. So I kind of like that too. So it, it isn't, it's easier <coughs> for, for some parts. The applications itself are bundled in directory in a dot app uh, suffix, 
and this is just like on the OS X, but the directory structure is flattened instead, uh, uh, as opposed to the OS X way. Uh, the applications are running in strict jail, so uh, they don't have access to media li libraries or whatever directly. They everything uh, has to go th through some other API or something that has access to it. You, you only have one app, app at a time, so there's no multitasking, so there's uh, less of an issue for how much memory do you have available or something. One little small point, this is just a really small point, that the, in, in when designing the interface or whatever, you don't actually have the uh, request for the, the application doesn't have, shouldn't have any way of quitting by itself. The user always exits the applications, and that, that just struck me as, uh, well, normal for that mobile device, but it, it was when used to coding on desktop, it's a thing to notice. The development environment is the, the Apple's own Xcode, the compiler itself is uh, GCC. Uh, I think it was four, but I think they upgraded to four dot two in the uh, SDK three. There's interface builder for um, for editing the user and uh, nat native user interfaces. So if you're doing normal type applications. You, it's quite easy to go just put something together in the interface builder and just uh, bind the actions to buttons and whatever and have uh, quite quickly a working application. Instruments is a, um, a profiler. Uh, it, you can um, use it to tr track your where your time goes in your application and where your memory is going and so on. Shark, Shark is also a um, profiler, but it's more low level. It, and it tells you more about, in, so shows you the assembly code and wh where you're using something stupid. Uh, touches are the primary way of uh, interfacing with the device. And and you have four touches that you can it, it tracks at, at the same time. You rarely want to use all four, but you have them if you want them. So touches are mu much like um, mouse events that they, but they have a starting point. They have moving events and they have end point and so on. Uh, also, the apprentice system tracks tap counts, that is, how many times you've tapped. So you don't have to do the guessing work was that this uh, touch event closer to, enough close to the previous touch event. So you know if it's a double tap or something. And also, the touch obje object you get from the apprentice system is the documentation say that the pointer for that touch object is, uh, can be used as an identity for that gesture. So if you have a bunch of move events and the pointer is the same, you can uh, guess that it's the si uh, part of the same gesture if you have multiple ones going at the same time, which is nice because tracking this stuff uh, is boring. Uh, the Apple way of doing thing, things are mostly Objective C. <coughs> it's uh, Objective C is uh, kind of like C with small dark tact on it, and it has a long history from the uh, next step days, and it's a strict subset of 
of C, that is all C code is valid objective C code, but then there's the addi addition of mostly dynamic message passing for the object oriented system. The memory management is manual reference counting, and it's, uh, it might sound square, scary, and but it's actually quite nicely handled as it's, um, well, you don't have to do much of it at the end because there's uh, things like other release pools and stuff helping you. And there's a convention gives you a lot of it. <coughs> so you don't have to think about it too much because it, you just do what the convention says. But you don't need to use Objective-C that much. You need some for the uh, using native user interface and how, to, how you get the um, uh, events like touches and, and so on. Also, other lifetime application lifetime things like uh, low memory condition and, and you exit re re request and so on. Also, you can have this uh, horrifying mixture of Objective-C and C++ just by renaming the file to .mm. .m is the Objective-C suffix and .mm is Objective-C++. So, uh, uh, you don't want to use that usually, but it's very nice to uh, integrate to your other C++ code if you are already have that, or are otherwise doing, doing um, uh, cross-platform stuff new, so you want to use, probably use C++, so it's nice to have that choice so you can just pass the events and so forth directed to your other code, which is in C++. Uh, I'll show you quickly about the syntax. So it might look a bit scary at the first time you've seen if you've never seen small talk code or uh, so I can used to C++ or Java or something. But um, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you have the object you're sending the message to you have the method name and you have the parameters enclosed in the uh, square bracket brackets. And that's, that's how you send a message to an object. And the odd thing may be that you, if you've never seen a small talk code, is that you, the method name uh, and parameters are intervened so that you have method name is actually method with foo and bar, and the columns are part of the name of the method. So you have ki kind of named parameters, which is nice for readability, but may look a bit ver verbose. So, so it might look odd, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, the memory ma management is easy in the sense that if you if you allocate, this creates the object, and this is this runs the constructor. Con constructor. So you always run the constructor yourself, which might seem odd, but it's the simple thing to do. When you allocate yourself, you need to always release it. But if you use a um, class method that uh, creates object for you then you don't need to release it uh, separately because it's already in the other release pool. And other release pools are, uh, objects in other release pools are released when the re other release pool is released. That's the main point of the convention you usually need to be aware of. Uh, Objects are defined in little upward syntax. There's the interface that tells you that you are now declaring interface. You do the object, you are 
declaring, and there's the uh, object you are inheriting from. And in the angle brackets, you are telling which uh, protocols you are implementing in your interface. This is kind of like Java interface, but different. But basically, you tell that it uh, you are implementing the protocol, whatever that may be. Uh, in, in case of delegates, that usually means you're getting some callbacks back from the uh, some view or, uh, or application or wh whatever, and and it knows that oh you're the delegate, do you respond to my uh, to this callback and it sends you the callback. Uh, in the brackets, you have the uh, uh, instance variables. And after that, you have the listing of the public methods you uh, you implement in your class. So there's the class method is denoted by the plus sign. You have the return value in the uh, brackets and the, and the method name. And instance variables are denoted by the minus sign. And the re return value is the Again, in there, and and you also mentioned the parameters it might get. Then you in the implement the uh, class in your .m file. First, you import the h file. Now, this import is exactly the same thing as include in normal C, but uh, it guarantees automatically that you don't uh, include uh, many times the same file. So you don't need include quads for the H file if you just using Objective C and using import. So the implementation is much the same way as you would guess from the interface, so just in the implementation, you just implement the methods. Easy. Now, you don't actually need to do a lot of this. Mm, you, you probably just use the, some template, like the OpenGL AES template from the uh, Xcode, but I, I just, but it's probably good to know what the syntax is like, even if you don't actually touch it that much. One thing that usually I, I, I see, um, especially at when, when I started my phone, um, I saw a lot of questions how, how the performance was um, well, not very stable, and and touch events were kind of missed or uh, lagged or whatever. And there was quite a lot of talk about it. It revolves around the fact that most usually use the OpenGL as templ template for the starting point, uh, and that's a good starting point. But it uses a timer for the for triggering the. Um, uh, refresh of the screen. So it says in every 16th of a second, run this method that render, renders the screen. And well, the timer is not very accurate. And I, when you're doing uh, game-like applications, it's uh, not usually what you want. Uh, the first alternative, uh, oh well, I had the output. <laughs> So it's f uh, the timer system is good. F uh, it's okay for simple stuff if you are not really frame rate limited or anything, and so on. But uh, yeah, the bad thing, the worst thing, even worse than the frame rate fluctu fluctuations, was that the touch events might lack several several frames. That happens when you uh, your 
actual frame rate is, say, 30, and the timer goes in uh, uh, one hundredth of a second, so 100 times per second, the timer might manage to add the, uh, the callback, the, the trigger, many times to the run loop before the event get handled. So, so there's, there may be like three frames and uh, that just draws the screen and then all, uh, all of a sudden you get all the events like touches and then you get all two, three, three frames and that ju that's just bad for the interactivity of the uh, of games. The first alternative that was suggested and is still uh, uh, common is that the is using a separate thread for rendering the screen. So a main thread that you, um, you have receives the events from the system like the touches and so on, handles the na native UI, but the game thread does your game logic and rendering and just loops. And a simple way of doing that is detaching new thread. If you want to use uh, Objective C or Cocoa threads, uh, the syntax is a bit funny, but the selector means that, that I, I mean the name of the method is game loop, and the, uh, for, for, the, for the method which will be run in the new thread, and, and target is, well, self, which is like this in C++, and this is the optional parameter. Uh, you can use uh, p threads if you want, but uh, I was told that um, you, that you should at least run a, a create a dummy cocoa thread, even if you actually use p threads, because it enables some flag in somewhere in the framework that we are using threads, so we need to be thread safe. And in the I wonder if you see the last line, but uh, in the method you implement for the thread, you uh, check the events. Uh, this is your own method where you check the events. You need to somehow communicate the uh, touch, touch events and so on to the game thread uh, that can be done by some queue that you implement and need to be aware that it needs to be thread safe and so on, and just run the game doing the doing logic and rendering. You probably need a sleep or something if you do this, and you, you might need um, uh, other small bits, but that's the main point of it, how, how to do how to implement that. The pros are it, it, that it works, and if you're doing a cross-platform engine or whatever, you might be doing it something similar anyway on other systems. It's, I've, I've heard many times that people use one thread to just to uh, get the uh, game controller inputs on other systems too, so it's not something that uh, is odd to do, but the cons are that threading is always more complexity that usually is not warranted for the benefits in simple mobile <laughs> applications at least and uh, and that the interfacing with the native UI is guaranteed only to work in the main thread so you need to in, if you uh, want to display a web view on your over your game, and your logic is in the game game loop, you need to somehow communicate to the main thread that you actually need to do th this. 
and not, not do it directly because the Coca Touch framework is itself isn't quite thread safe, or they do not uh, at least guarantee that it is. So it's more complex, and and that's always a bad thing. Uh, the other alternative that I've seen recently su su suggested is to use uh, uh, the way you would actually normally do on other systems is, is that you run the uh, run loop kind of manually and you can do that by by the um, Well, first you need some um, execute a loop, but you don't want to execute that loop, uh, a busy loop in the in one of the initiation methods, like application did finish launching. So you might want to perform a selector on the current run loop. That adds the calling of that method to the current run loop. And so it well, it's run uh, right after that it is the method exits, but uh, the system might be doing other stuff after um, after calling this uh, delegate me method. So don't loop here, but loop later, and that's one way of doing that. Uh, and then the game loop, you do your logic and rendering, and then you. Uh, run the run loop manually in that uh, when when you're done with your frame, so that's uh, a lot closer what you would do say on Windows uh, when using the Win32 API, and it's a lot mm, well simpler actually, and it might be what you actually want to do, probably. Uh, it's simpler, and you can use the native UI uh, naturally without communication between threads or anything. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, actually a concern as a con, that when you have one long frame, say you, in your game loop you're actually doing something like uh, saving a game and that takes a long time or whatever and you have a hitch on the frame rate so now you're blocking the whole application and you can't receive any uh, application termination notices or low memory conditions but that's probably not an actual issue I'm just paranoid um, but yeah I'm not saying which uh, way of doing run loops is better, but um, probably do the simpler thing, and if you have any reason to do it otherwise, then try that. Just experiment. On the audio side, this is really small part. Uh, I'm just gonna explain that there's open AL for sound effects. That, that's the mm, path of least resistance if you want to do sound effects on the uh, iPhone. And you have the audio services, audio queue stuff for streaming audio that, that allows you to use, utilize the um, hardware decoder for the MP3s and AACs and whatever. Uh, the Crashlander sample is often uh, Recommended that they it's, it has a sound system that's that does most of the hard work of initializing stuff and so on and loading samples and but um, we, it's the Crashlander sound system is um, buggy and it leaks and stuff it's nasty code so you don't probably want to use it directly even if others tell you to. But you can use it as, as a reference, how, how, you, how, to communi the, how, how to use the a APIs and so on, so you know what to look at. 
So it's, it's not a reference, but don't use it directly. Uh, then there's a concept of audio ca categories. Uh, audio categories um, uh, ways to tell the system that how you are using the sounds. Now, this might sound odd at first, but it, it kind of makes sense. You're telling it this is ambient sound, so it's just some stuff. So the system knows, oh, it's ambient sound, but if the user is listening to music on the iPod software, it can uh, continue playing on that because it's just ambient sound and, and the media player sound is uh, more, more important than the ambient sounds. Or you're doing a media player application, then the media player category is the only one that allows you to play uh, sound even when the screen is locked. So it has some nice ways of telling you how you're using the audio. <coughs> also, this is just a small snippet that you can run on in ter terminal to convert uh, files to CAF format, which is actually an I format, if I understood correctly. Or something. It's an Apple format, uh, but uh, it's just container format and you can put just raw audio in it, but uh, it works. It's um, the Crestlander sample uh, works more uh, um, more easily when you know that you, j you just run this command to the audio files and you, it just works after that. So it's just nice to ha have a simple way of converting files to the exact format you want to use. There's some gotchas in the audio system that, that I have um, I have had issues with. The, when the user was playing music and wanted to listen to the music, and you have um, a game that has music and sound effects, uh, uh, and you tell the category as the audio category as uh, one that says that I have ambient music, but sound I want sound effects anyway. So uh, th there's nothing you, you have automatically way of supporting user music in a way that you user just puts their favorite music playing and you start the game and sound effects work as they should, but the music is just the user's own. But it has some bugs in it, so uh, at first it wouldn't, it would play the game out uh, music anyway, and that was stupid. So now I've found that you can qu query for the, from the system that is other audio playing. And by that you can change which category you're using and, uh, and you can um, uh, use different categories so that you're f forced to use own music when you want it to, but you can use other category that, or just don't play music when, when you notice that the system is already playing music. And in the latest G.0 SDK, there was some new feature that allowed the audio queue audio services to decode MP3s and AACs in software. It, it previously, I guess it only allowed uh, one, one stream that always used the hardware decoder and was and that was okay but when when they introduced a uh, um, software decoder to the to the system uh, uh, it has the side effect of uh, that uh, if if you allow the system to use the um, the iPod application music then then it would uh, reserve the hardware decoder for the system, for the iPod application, 
and you would get the software decoder. And even if there wasn't anything playing on the uh, I iPod system, so you get uh, suddenly your application is just stuttering on the 3.0 de devices, even so it would fine on the earlier versions. And well, easy fix is to make sure that you don't uh, use the um, audio services in vain, that you don't create, uh, you don't reserve any resources from the, from the system for your own music when there's other music playing or vice versa. For OpenGL, yes, I'll be very brief in this because the, uh, the next presentation is more is going to talk more about it, so which I'm looking forward for. Uh, OpenGL ES with a one 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 version that's available on the, all the devices on iPhone and iPod Touch is the same part of fixed function OpenGL, and I like it. it you get to do the um, same parts, you, you have the jail draw arrows and uh, you have multi-texturing multi with two textures and and so on and it all just works. There's no, there's very little hassle with uh, extensions. There are the um, exten extensions are used more in the in some parts, but uh, the basic open shell is just just there. You don't have to do anything, and you can mostly use the same code path on desktop, and that's really nice too. Just for developing on the desktop, uh, even when not, when you don't want to use the um, simulator for from the Xcode, so you can actually develop on. Windows or whatever, because it's just open jail, but there's small parts that only differ. On the 3GS, there's Do.O open jail, ES, with shaders and stuff. I don't know much about it, but it looks promising. Uh, it also has features like PVRTC, that's proper VR texture compression. The, it's their own texture compression method, and I believe it's quite um, suggested to use it because it um, drops your bandwidth usage quite a bit, but it's also limiting because the textures, I believe, need to be square and um, and it, it isn't quite good with alpha and so on. Also, you get you get frame buffer objects, which is which was uh, quite a surprise. But you actually, uh, actually, the actual rendering context you create for, from the system is actually an FBO. So it's uh, a nice thing to know that it, it actually works. You can do render the texture in on the iPhone. I don't know. It, it isn't very um, performant to do a lot of that. You don't probably get to use full screen blooms or anything, but it might be useful for some, from some small things that that you might want. And then there's uh, skinning by matrix palette extension, and I haven't used that, but um, you get that. I don't know if it's performant. Maybe we'll know in the next presentation. Uh, the Power VR chip is uh, tile-based deferred shading, and well, that that just changes a bit how you think about the uh, process that is done. It, it ac accumulates all the primitives you are going to draw, sorts them, and draws them in some tiles, and that the, the why you need to be aware of it that when the you need to be allowed the GPU to use the sorting and early calling as m much as it can. That means you mostly draw op opaque, uh, opaque uh, primitives so that uh, there's no blending or anything uh, involved. So so that it can sort 
uh, all that, and even early color whole primitives when it sees that uh, they are not seen or whatever. So that uh, that means when using uh, stuff like AlphaCut, uh, it uh, it would actually have to draw the whole primitive because it would need to know a pixel by pixel basis that is visible. But if it's just just opaque uh, triangle, then uh, it can see that if it's uh, visible at all and just uh, like cuts it completely. Uh, sort by state changes, the, that's quite impo important. That mostly means that don't do texture, texture changes every uh, object you do, as, but sort by uh, texture changes and alpha blend changes and whatever. So I'll, I'll state and always draw the opaque ones first because it, it can do the fastest on them first and after that when there's blending it has to do them on in order and that's slower. I'll, uh, if you can put all textures in big at atlas textures when possible. That means uh, there's one big texture that can be thousand by thousand and you put little textures on it and and you can just use little bits of of the texture at once, but when you're not doing texture state changes then, and it's a lot faster, and that's actually quite important point. Otherwise, minimize bandwidth use, well, that's quite given, but uh, it's even more important than mobile devices, so just don't uh, use huge textures in vain or uh, whatever. For backward compatibility, <coughs> when you when you download the SDK and want to use uh, features that's only on the say on the 3.0 operating system. Uh, but you want to also uh, support 2.x uh, devices. You want to support them if you're doing uh, commercial software because a, lo a lot of the iPod Touch users are still on the uh, 2.x operating system version because it costs money from, for them to upgrade. So it makes sense to try to support the two dot something uh, versions as well. It's quite easily easy to support. Well, not easy, but um, straightforward. Uh, set the SDK to be 3.0, that it knows all the features that are available, and then use it to target to something else. That, that means it it uses the right headers and whatever and that have the new features, but when you set the target to uh, to earlier versions, it knows that it, can, it can't use the, some of the features or whatever. And then uh, when, when you have the framework, <coughs> you can set it as weak linked. And that means that it, it tries to load it, but if it fails, it won't matter. It just it just ignore, ignores it, and uh, that's espe especially if, if it's a completely new framework in the later versions. I believe it it can be useful for when just new stuff added to already existing frameworks also. And in the code, you can if it's a ob Objective C feature, you can just uh, qu query the class. Uh, uh, class instance uh, from the Objective-C runtime. It's a di dynamic system, so you can just query stuff like that. And you can check if you got nil, that's the Objective-C null, uh, then you know that it's available or not. And that's useful for supporting older versions. 
Uh, small notes on the PNG usage. Uh, when you add PNG files to the project, uh, as they are in your project, and uh, they're just normal PNGs, but when when the system uh, when the Xcode compiles your project, it mangles the PNGs. Uh, that is, it optimizes them. Uh, it changes the. It uses some proprietary chunk in the PNG to store uh, the image in the right uh, component order and whatever. And it also pre-multiplies alpha, if I've understood correctly. That's probably okay, but you just need to be aware of it. Uh, there's the in the pro project settings. There's just compressed PNG files that controls if it mangles them or not. Uh, if you're using the system libraries, they'll probably open it fine because they're patched to understand the format. But if you happen to use uh, embed some other PNG loading library, if you have some nice image library of your own or whatever. It might fail because it doesn't understand the chunk it uses in the file. So either disable the compression or the or use system libraries when loading PNG files. But there's two uh, two special PNG files that you need to be aware of. Default PNG is the image that is shown when you click on the uh, icon on the device and the application launches, it immediately shows and scales the default BNG to the screen. And, uh, and then there's the icon itself. Uh, if you uh, submit to uh, the App Store your application, those two files probably need to be mangled or otherwise your submission might fail. Icon is probably not uh, that imp important if you allow it to add the gloss or whatever, but if you use the pre-rendered option, you, you need to do that. Just to reference how you can use the PNG, PNG crush uh, to, tool to do the mangling or the texture tool to uh, create a peer uh, the texture compression images, just a, just a reference. When all else fails, clean the project or delete the builder, uh, quit Xcode, reboot device. Uh, this is not <laughs> as bad in uh, 3.0 that this was be before, but I still get odd behavior here and there, and I need to just clean the project and recompile and reboot the device or whatever when it suddenly start, starts to start, stops the uh, communication with the device. And when you use Shark, it's very buggy. Uh, uh, I've actually many times uh, managed to get a hard uh, halt from the device so that it doesn't respond to anything. So I learned through some experimentation that the hard reboot on the device is pressing the home and lock button at the same time for the five seconds. Yeah, just, to, just so you don't uh, uh, panic because you can't do the Nokia reboot on the device that is remove the battery. <laughs> so, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Thank you for the lecture, and we will have the next, ses next session after 10 minutes. Yeah.